How y'all doing today? Two. Two. This is not a time to get quiet. Two. This is a time to enter into a mere cover. A chariot. So if you see any, any adults out in the hall, please have them come in. This is their time in the Word. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I said Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let's try that again. I said Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. This, this message might be a one or a two, or I'm not sure it might be a one or two parter, but I've entitled it The Chariot, the Mere Kava of His Presence. The Chariot, the Mere Kava of His Presence. Go with me, please to Yohanan 14.9. We're going to go quickly. We have a lot to cover. Yohanan, you know, I'm feeling so comfortable here. I almost feel guilty. <laughs> my shoes are off. I have no tight belt. I don't have any socks, or, you know, cutting off my blood circulation. I almost feel guilty. <laughs> yes. Yohanan 14.9. Yahshua said to Philip, Philip, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me? Philip, he who has seen me has seen the Father. How do you say, show us the Father? How did we receive the prophets? How did we receive the Torah? How did we receive the Ketuvim? How did we receive the revelations of ancient man who spoke and who were moved by the Ruach HaKodesh, how did we receive those things? Through Yeshua. Because he said, no man. He said, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. No prophet of Israel, no writer of the Tehillim, no writer of the Mishnah, no scribe has ever seen the Father. Can we, can we get that? Can we get past that? No one has ever seen the Father. No one. And so those who received revelation, whether it's in days gone by or the current days, receive it through Yeshua, but not only through Yeshua, but through Yeshua putting us in a chariot, because in Hebraic expression, in Hebraic thought, in Hebraic understanding, the chariot is a move into the Ruach. Now, coming from the, the systems that we used to come from, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. It was like, I'm in, well, brother, leave me alone right now because I'm in the spirit. Don't bother me right now because I'm moving in the spirit. You're what? Moving in the moving. You can't sit still in the ruach. You can't sit still in his presence. You can't sit still under his anointing. You can't sit still under his shekhinah. You've got to move, you've got to be prompted to move out and do something when you're in his ruach, in his anointing, in his, in his set apartment. And in Hebraic thought, all the men of Yahweh who received revelation from Yahweh through Yeshua were said to be placed in a mere kava, chariot. Don't look so holy at me, please. Look interested. <laughs> Mirkava is a chariot. And so all the revelations of the first covenant, as well as the Birchadasha, were done in the Ruach, and a Mirkava is always done while the passenger is awake. Okay? That's why I don't trust dreams. Now, dreams are okay. I mean, they're, they're okay. But I don't trust them unless I have them confirmed. You got to get a dream confirmed by two or three witnesses. <laughs> A vision is hard to confirm because a vision usually is just for you personally. Are you with me? So a vision is just for you and it's hard to confirm a vision as it is a dream or a prophecy. A dream or a prophecy you could confirm with someone else. But a vision is with your eyes open, you are in the back seat of the mere kava, the chariot, and Yeshua is doing the driving. <laughs> because the Father is not going to drive your car. The Father will not get in the car with you lest you melt like a, like a bad M&M out in the sun. 
So anytime you receive something from Yahweh, be, be it known and understood unto thee that it is Yeshua doing the driving, and you are in the back seat of the chariot, and all the scriptures, all the revelations, all the understandings, all the writings, all the Nevi'im, all the Ketuvim, all the Torah were given by chariot riders who were in the back seat, and Yeshua was doing the driving. Come on. And Hebraic thought, it's ridiculous to say, I'm moving in the Holy Ghost. It's ridiculous. You might as well be saying, I'm eating pizza on, on, on Saturn in the quarter most part. Okay? Moving in the spirit in Hebraic thought is not going, hey, you know, hey. Okay. Moving in the spirit in Hebraic thought is being in the back of a chariot and, and, and the Moshiach is doing the driving. You understand? Is it making sense? Yeah. All the Mirkavot, or the chariot rides, lead men to see with their eyes open. Isn't that what Yahweh is in the business of doing, opening eyes to the truth? Yeah. Isn't, that, isn't that what Yahweh wants to open your eyes more and more to see who you are as returning Ephraim or returning Yehuda? And so our eyes are constantly being opened, and here's the miracle, while we are awake. Our eyes are being constantly opened while we are awake. Unlike Adam and Eve, he doesn't, he doesn't, not unlike Adam, he didn't have to put him to sleep, put us to sleep to make Chabad. Okay? He does things while we're awake so we can understand and perceive and pick up and comprehend these things. And so Ezekiel, Yaakov, Abraham, Yitzchak, Moshe Rabbeinu, all the elders, the patriarchs of Israel, were placed in the back of Yahweh's Merkavah with their eyes open. Ezekiel's vision. Yeshayahu's vision. Moshe Rabbeinu's vision. The elders of Israel's vision. Very few dream. The only dream, the only major dreamer was Yosef, and look where it got him. Got him in trouble. And Daniel in, in, Bab in Babel. In Babylon. Remember? Daniel was a dreamer. But visions are eye-openers. Turn to your neighbor and say, eye-openers. Eye Let's try that again. Eye-opener. Eye-opener. When you got saved, remember your old pastor told you? Now go into this thing with your eyes open. He was right. But to be moved by the Ruach HaKodesh means you're in the back of Yahweh's chariot. And only Yeshua is allowed to drive. Because Yahweh won't drive. You know what will happen to you? You'll melt from his Shekhinah. And so when you speak to a Hebrew who really understands his word, Yahweh's word, you always say, you know something? It's possible to understand Yecheskel's Mirkava. It's possible to understand Yeshayahu's Mirkava. It's possible to understand Moshe Rabbeinu's Mirkavot that enabled him to write the Torah. Are you with me? The only way you're going to be moved in the Ruach, brothers and sisters, is to get in the chariot. And I got a lot to talk to you today, so just, just we're, we're going to be in for a nice session. All right? Turn to your neighbor and say, nice session. Nice session. Not cessation, rather <laughs> session. <laughs> so the Mirkavot are eye-opening visions that are all designed to get you to see some aspect, some part of, some manifestation of, some revelation of the driver. Yahweh does not allow you to be a backseat driver, Ted. It's Yeshua doing the driving of the Merkava. Yeah. And you're in the back, and every vision has the same purpose. Every vision, every, every move, when Yahweh moves you in the Ruach HaKodesh, it is to acquaint you up close with the driver. Amen. To get you acquainted or reacquainted or move you closer to the driver. Not so you start shaking and have the heebie-jeebies and fall down backwards and knock your head against the wall. In Hebraic thought, being in Yahweh's chariot guarantees you to see visions, understanding, illuminations, insight into new aspects of the Adam Kadmon, the celestial Adam who condescends to leave his heavenly throne and drive you around. Have you ever heard of the movie Driving Miss Daisy? Well, I have news for you. Yahshua has been driving a lot longer than that dude who used to drive her around. <laughs> And if you don't let Yeshua do the driving and jump in his Merkava, there is one S period, A period, Dan, who will drive you crazy. 